Hey everybody, welcome to this beautiful gratitude series, 10 days together. Here's how it's gonna work. Um, every day you will get a new video that will include some, some contemplative thoughts on gratitude and just learning some strategies to shift our thinking, which is um, often in lack and limitation over to a different area of our brain that has to do with abundance and joy. There's a ton of science on this and just a quick Google search, you'll find like there's a lot of studies on the practice of gratitude. A recent one at Harvard showed that after 10 weeks of consistent and deliberate gratitude practice, participants in the study showed an overall improvement in their mental health and their overall well-being. So that's just a snippet. There's so many out there Studies have shown that a gratitude practice that's felt and not just jotted down and sort of done to check off a box, but truly felt, truly um, participating in the feeling of gratitude has shown to have improvement in sleep, in physical well being, in heart health, in mental health, in relationships. Like it's just, it goes beyond just being thankful. So I'm going to ask each day that you receive a video, I will give you a contemplative assignment. It might be something where you jot down some thoughts, or maybe you have a gratitude journal already. I'm just going to give you a prompt. If you're not into writing and journaling, like eh, I don't do it. There's some great free apps out there in the app store, a gratitude journal that I've used digitally for many, many years. Um, I've gone back to paper. I like that soulful feeling of pen and paper, but if writing's not for you, there's some free apps and you simply just type in your gratitude. Some of them even give you a daily prompt. So that's a great tool to have. I'm also going to offer just some ways to retrain our brain to look for good in our life. We have this conditioning in our culture where we wake up in the morning, not enough sleep, not enough time, not enough energy. And that's just limiting us to keeps us from being our best self. So I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to retrain your brain to see that there is plenty of time and plenty of sleep and plenty of energy and plenty of abundance. It's just how we choose to put our mind on a certain thing. So then we'll enjoy a yoga practice together. Of course, gratitude um, has a lot to do with our heart. So we'll be doing a lot of heart opening yoga practice. It can all be done in a chair. If you'd prefer to sit in a chair as like I am right now, I'll be moving my chair to get on my mat, but you can always stay in a chair. Many of the postures that I will teach you, you are going to be able to do from a seated position and just eliminate the leg shape. It's not a big deal. Like just getting in touch with your body and in touch with your heart is what's most important for this practice. I'm also going to be kind of encouraging you to do some tools that are everyday tools that you can have available in your life um, just to help you along the way of gratitude and shifting your thinking from lack and limitation to incredible abundance. So get yourself comfortable. Yoga mat is behind me. I've got my buddy Leo hanging out with me. I have some soft music playing on my speakers. I'm happy to share my playlist with you. I have some beautiful playlists that you may recognize if you've practiced with me before on my Spotify or just put on some music that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Each and every day's practice will be anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. I want to make it achievable and doable. And then throughout the day, I will be giving you just some awareness to have for what you're grateful for and why we can truly shift our thinking into a place of abundance and goodness. So with that, we're going to get on the yoga mat. I'm going to slide this chair out of the way and we're going to enjoy a practice. We're going to start sitting down on the mat. I'm going to prefer probably my legs to be bent in what's called hero's pose. So I'm not sitting crisscross. I'm going to be folded over my knees and that just feels good in my hips. Totally do what feels best in your body. And I'll meet you on the mat, get comfortable, and we're going to begin. All right. So I'm going to just start by coming into my favorite seated position, which is hero's pose. And this feels really nice in my spine and really nice in my hips. I'm going to drift my eyes closed, place one hand on my heart, one hand on my belly. So settle in whatever shape your body is in, whether it's in a chair or you're sitting cross-legged, or maybe you're kind of shifted over onto one cheek. Anything is fine. Just feel your body here for a second. 
You might, with the fingertips, be able to feel the rhythm of your heart pumping in your chest. You might feel with your other hand a little gurgling in your belly if it's been a while since you've had any food to eat. And then feel your body breathe. Take a long breath in here. And then empty the breath. Notice how the chest will rise on the inhale. And it will settle in on the exhale. How beautiful is that? This perfect rhythm. This beautiful rhythm that's unique to you. Other people's breath may be a tad different, maybe faster, maybe slower. Yours is yours. And what's so beautiful to remember too about breath is that as you take a breath out, I take a breath in, which in this big giant universe of ours, it means that we're sharing something. And what yours is mine and mine is yours. And there's a reciprocity to breath. Go ahead and remove your hands, open up your eyes and just bring your hands down by your side. We're gonna shift into the right hand. So drop your right hand onto the mat. Or if you're in a chair, just let your right hand dangle. Left arm is gonna reach up to the sky and we're just gonna begin to open the side body, okay? So we need to open up all sides of the body to be able to really illuminate the heart. So we're gonna start with our ribs and the side body. You might even shift the weight over into the left hip just a little bit, create that nice C curve on your next breath in. You're gonna bring your left hand up to the sky and then lower it, super graceful, right? There's no hurry, life's fast enough. Bring your left hand to the mat, right arm to the sky, up and over we go. And then shift the weight into the right hip and just feel that, it feels so nice. Next breath, right arm rises and be super patient here, just let it float. There's really no rush to this. One more time each side, inhale, left arm goes to the sky, exhale, Bend and reach that hip. Inhale to the sky. Exhale, let it float. Right arm this time. Up we go. Exhale over. So beautiful. Inhale up. Exhale, let it float. And we're going to bring the hands behind us. So I'm going to take my hands away from my feet, away from my toes, away from my buns. If you're in a chair, just grab the back of your chair. I have my hands tripoded here. You might be able to come to a flat palm. It's depending on your back. So I apologize for wearing dark clothes. This part of my body, my chest, my stomach, my sternum is elevating to the sky. Take a peek up there. Don't let your head just drop down your back. Keep it active. Keep your neck doing some of the work. Lift your chin, lift your heart, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Take a breath. Squeeze on your exhale, pinch those shoulder blades together, and then inhale, straighten your spine. So sometimes that huge chest opener can kind of bubble up some stuff, right? It might bubble up a little bit of emotional stuff like, oh, I didn't know I was holding all of that. And sometimes it can make our stomach feel a little bit uneasy. So we're going to reverse that shape. Hands are going to go onto your knees or your thighs, and then pull your spine in. So pull your navel to your spine, round your shoulders, and then tuck your chin a whole bunch. So this is just seated cat and cow. Take a breath. Open up those shoulder blades. And we're just going to find two rounds here. So we're going to inhale, hands slide to the back, lift your heart. Exhale, hands come around, pull the sternum in. One more time. Inhale, hands sweep behind, chest lifts, nose lifts. Exhale, come on around. Come back to a straight spine. And then we're gonna all find ourselves sitting on our right cheek. So my feet are to the left and my weight of my body's on my right cheek. Leo's not helping. Right hand's gonna come to the ground. We call this a little mermaid twist and a mermaid stretch. And what we're doing is we're really looking at the rib cage and all of that tissue that supports and keeps our rib cage kind of corseted around our chest and our lungs. We want that to happen, but we also wanna have a little bit of elasticity there to allow the breath to be buoyant, but then also to allow the posture to be straight. And then also we tap into that heart center. Okay, so bring your right hand down, left arm goes up. I'm gonna bend my right elbow and really find some depth here. 
Inhale to rise. Exhale, we let it float. We're going to do three of those. Inhale up. Exhale over. Inhale up. Notice the gracefulness. If you practiced with me last month, or actually this month, last month, October, if you practiced with me in October, there was a lot of focus on alignment. I'm going to shift gears here in this month of November and kind of soften it up a little bit. So I'm going to take my right hand and bring it all the way around my body. So now I'm twisting. Left hand's going to come behind, take a big breath. I'm going to pull my navel towards my left hip. It may not go far. This is a shorter version of a twist, right? We're kind of in a closed position, but we're going to open it. Take one more breath. Exhale, spin a little deeper. And then wind back to center. Let's have this open twist. Open meaning we have more space over here, just the way that our legs are directed. So bring your left hand to the mat. Take a big breath. And now spin to the right. Do you feel how much more open and spacious that is? Take a breath. Spin to the right. Maybe look behind you. And then wind back to front. Let's flip it to the other side. So the legs are going to come over to the right side. You'll be sitting on your left cheek this time. Create a tall spine here. We're going to find that sort of flowing. If you think about how, I always think about when I'm doing this kind of motion, whether I'm standing or sitting, kind of like the trees, how they just kind of bend with whatever shows up. And kind of learning that flexibility is only going to help us retrain our thoughts from being so rigid that life has to be a certain way to kind of finding some of that movement in our thoughts and then how we deal with the things in our life that are less than ideal. Drop your left hand, right hand to the sky, big breath. Exhale over. Oh, feels so good. Inhale up. Exhale, it floats. We got two more. Inhale up. Try not to let your body be so rigid here. We spent a lot of time being rigid last month in October. And this month, we're going to be flowing and free, which really taps into the energy of gratitude. Beautiful. We're going to take the closed twist first. We're twisting that way. It's a little tighter package, right, to get everything to move around. Bring your left hand over. Take a breath and look over your right shoulder. One more. Spin around. Notice the upper back here, right where the heart is. It's getting a nice twist. Come back to center. Other side, right hand's going to find the mat. Take a big breath. Spin to the left. Take a breath. Spin to the left. One more. You should feel that rotation through your belly. You should feel really nice. Come on back. We're going to transition our body onto all fours. So, Pick a side, doesn't matter which side. My head's going over to the left because it's an easier spin around. Tuck your feet, tuck your knees underneath your hips and then untuck your feet. You might even tap them a little bit. Sometimes when we sit a lot, it can be a little bit, um, our feet kind of go to sleep. And Leo is having intense gratitude for me today and I have no idea why. He's a pretty aloof cat, but for some reason when I'm out here, he falls in love. He's biting my toes. All right, pull your chest in, round your shoulders, tuck your chin. So we just did this in a seated version. We're going to come into traditional cat and cow. This is cat, or shall we say this is for Leo, stretching our back. Next inhale, drop your belly, slide your heart forward and through, lift your nose, and then round your spine again. And just find that rhythm of your breath, really paying attention to the heart here. We lead with the heart on the inhale. We open the heart on the exhale. We go forward in life through the lens of gratitude as we take in. And then we express gratitude as we open up our heart. We take in all that is good and all that is great through our heart. And on the exhale, we acknowledge and pay gratitude. One more time. Paying close attention to the heart. Round your spine. Come back to neutral. Tuck your pretty toes. Lift your hips. We're going to find downward facing dog. 
Look at your toes. Make sure your feet are separated about as wide as your hips. Just try not to have them too close together. That can put some pressure on the knees. We're going to walk about halfway up our mat and then take your feet nice and wide. And once you're halfway up your mat, maybe you need blocks, maybe you don't. Just begin to sway side to side. Remember, we're not going to make too much fuss about the technicalities of the practice physically because our work this month is to really look at our thoughts and how do we express gratitude for the things that we may miss. Come on back to neutral and slide on all the way, stacking bone on bone on bone on bone. Get to the very top and then go ahead and turn onto that long edge of your mat. So you can be facing the same direction as me. We're gonna pull up our yoga pants, always a battle. I've yet to find the perfect pants that don't slide down, regardless of size. Toes are gonna be forward, heels are gonna be to the back. I'm gonna stack my arms like fire logs. My spine is neutral here. I'm gonna open up those fire logs as big as I possibly can. Drop the right hand, the left arm goes to the sky. So this is a variation of a star. Come back to center, stack your fire logs, opposite hand on bottom, split your fire logs, drop your left and reach your right. So we're working a lot of side body today. Come on back, stack your logs, open your logs, tip your star. Then one more time, reach, stack, reach, and tip. Beautiful, come on back and then lower your hands. Give your shoulders a roll. Focusing here today and here, we really wanna find some openness through the front, but then not forget about the back, right? So we're gonna find this beautiful, taking the shoulder blades that are typically like this and we're gonna open them by pulling the sternum in. So we're gonna interlace our fingers like a basket, flip your basket towards that beautiful heart that's filled with gratitude. Push your basket so that your arms become straight. Keeping your legs just like they are, we're gonna spin that basket around to the right. You should feel big rotation through that center rib cage, through the center of your spine. Come back to center, twist to the left, straight arms. Mm -hmm. Feel that rotation of the heart center. One more time each side, really paying attention to the heart. We spend so much time guarding our heart, protecting our heart, not revealing our heart. We're gonna work on it. Inhale up to the sky, another side bend, reach to the right. Can you kind of see the theme today? Inhale back up, exhale left. Come back up, one more time each side. Feeling that length through the side body. Beautiful, come back up and then lower it. Unhook the basket and just roll your wrist around. It's rare that we spend a lot of time focusing here and the front and the back, okay? So you might even feel like maybe this is too much. Just ease off a little bit. It's a lot. We, we have a tendency to focus a lot on our arms and our legs and not as much through here, but I'm gonna get there. Okay, I'm gonna set my feet close together. I'm gonna make the same basket but I'm gonna turn so you can see what's gonna happen with my spine, hopefully. Maybe if I get more on the yellow. Okay, so my arms are straight. My spine is straight. I'm gonna flip my basket. I'm gonna push my basket. And as I push it, my chin's gonna go down. My shoulder blades are gonna separate. And my heart's squeezing towards my spine. On my next inhale, bring the arms to the sky. Squeeze those shoulder blades together. Reach your arms up and back. Lift your heart. See the back bend? Take a breath. Exhale. Arms go in front. Spine rounds. Chin tucks. Inhale. Heart lifts. Arms reach way back. One more exhale here. Pull the sternum in. Round the spine. One more back bend. Inhale up. And then release, okay? So when we're typically working with the heart, 
the breath is so much a part of, of this work. So if we're having restrictive breath, short and fast, almost panting, there's no way that our heart center can be illuminating. So I'm going to encourage you throughout the next 10 days to really fill up volume, breathe all the way into your heart, especially when we're in that extension part. Okay, we're in that extension. So reach your arms to the sky, bend your pretty elbows like a cactus. Now, the same thing's gonna happen here. I'm gonna take my arms behind me. So just in doing that, you can see my heart center is lifted. I'm gonna bring my arms back to straight spine. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Elbows back, elbows forward. Elbows back, elbows forward. Three more. Okay, so we're working beautiful heart, chest muscles, and giving permission for our heart to open here. Keep your elbows way back. Now, you're going to press your hips forward, draw a line with your nose to the sky, and feel that back bend. Inhale, reach to the sky, straighten your spine, and then bring your hands right to heart center, which is a mudra known as Anjali Mudra, and it means to offer. Okay, how cool is that? Anjali, it's spelled A-N-J-A-L-I, Anjali, which means to offer. So when we take our right hand and press it into our left, and then I like to take my thumbs and press them against my sternum, that is a powerful reminder that deep within my heart, I am choosing to offer thanks for the day, for the practice, for my body, for the colors, for the food that I have. And throughout these 10 days, I'm just going to be continuing to have you go a little deeper in that gratitude. It's very, very easy for us to say, I'm grateful for my friends and for my family and for my dog and my cat, maybe not the cat, but for my house, for where I live. What if we started to look at why friends are important? I'm grateful for friends because I feel seen and I feel heard. I'm very grateful for my family because they not only challenge me, but they also remind me that I belong. I'm super grateful for my house because it provides safety for me, which is so important. I'm grateful for all the colors outside this window that I get to look at to be reminded of the complexities and differences that life brings us in the form of people and experiences and pain and joy, that there's so many different versions. And color is a great reminder of that. I'm also really grateful for the color green because green is associated with the heart chakra and that's where we're working. So take your Anjali Mudra, create a lotus, which is simply opening up your hands. I have my thumbs connected my pinkies connected. And I want you just to stand here with this beautiful lotus at your heart. And I want you to think of three blessings just today, just three blessings. Maybe use your eyes, look around and what do you see? What do you feel? Is it a cozy t-shirt? Is it the warmth of your furnace? Is it the sun coming in the window? Three things just like that. Now take that flower that you've created. You've poured in those three things of goodness. Seal up the flower into Anjali Mudra where we offer thanks. We offer deep thanks. I'm going to take my legs wide. Just going to come into a short little warrior series. Just have some activity in the legs. Turn your right toes that way. Bend your right knee. We did a lot of this last month in October in that beautiful series. I'm going to reach the right hand up to the sky. Keep the legs like they are. We're just going to tick-tock the arms. Notice how I'm not worried so much about the depth that I'm creating in my legs. I'm instead simply allowing my body to flow. So I'm coming into that reverse warrior and then a very soft side angle and a reverse. Just let your arms be like those beautiful tree branches swaying, allowing flexibility, allowing our brain to have the capacity to move out of those deeply rooted grooves that we have of lack and limitation and instead just flow, okay? Two more, just feel that. Letting the fingers follow 
the hands not getting worried about alignment. Let's take it to the other side, left toes, arms reach. We start right away. Okay, so we're just feeling activity mostly from the navel up. So we're letting that heart area move. We're letting our arms be an extension of our heart. And letting that freedom to flow through life's gifts and challenges from a place of gratitude. Two more. So nice. Last one. And then bring your toes forward. Stack those fire logs. Bring your arms up. Stick your head through that window. Hold on to the elbow and pull. Come back to center. Hold on to the other elbow and pull. Come back, lower your arms, sweep them out to the side, and then you're going to crisscross at the elbow. Grab a hold of your shoulders, squeeze super tight, an act of self-love, right? Squeezing. Open up big. Doctors say, we need 10 hugs a day. If you don't have 10 different people to hug, you certainly have the capacity to do this. One more time each side. Open up. Each time you cross a different elbows on the bottom, squeeze, pull the shoulder blades wide. One more. Wrap and squeeze, pull the shoulder blades. Open up your beautiful arms. Lower your hands, roll your shoulders, and come back to Anjali Mudra. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Knowing that this practice has begun day one of kind of loosening up the body, the heart, opening up the gates of gratitude, unlocking some of that rigidity that we hold in our heart by thinking that we wish things were different than they are, or that there's not enough, when in truth there's plenty, plenty. Stay here as long as you would like, allowing your body to be flooded with abundance and goodness. And I look forward to seeing you day two, okay? Each day you will be getting a attachment from me that will include some journaling, some contemplative thoughts, some ideas, some quotes, and a yoga practice. This is yours forever. Just save that link. I like to tell people to save the link into a notebook section on their phone or tablet or computer. And then you can always go back to this series whenever you're feeling like you're slipping back into that habit of feeling like there's not enough. So day one is done. I'll see you tomorrow for day two. Take care and continue to work the heart.